really important that we begin to change the mindset of young people to know that your vote counts. They don't understand that the legislative arm of government is actually a co-equal arm of government. We have an uh, incredible amount of potential. Whatever it is I was doing because of my personal DNA, it mm -hmm. had to be of an international standard. Which is what, seriously speaking, is all about. Yes, how it is on this show that we try to make sure whatever we talk about, we're talking seriously about it. Now, in recent months, I've heard this campaign or came across this campaign that says, not too young to run. I wanted to bring the founders of that campaign up here because I was excited by the fact that a group of people are trying to get young people to take the bull by the horns. No matter how bad Nigeria is, we can't all stay on the periphery. Remember last week, um, Dr. Olaba Logan was saying the young people have to revolutionize the political system. So that was the intention. But then again, I met this young man who happens to have a very, very strong constituency in one area called Ibutemeta in Lagos, who had already taken the bull by the horns. And I'm like, hmm, we're going to use this young man as a case study to let people know that no matter how young you are, if you have the heart and you are tenacious enough, you can at least try to make sure you get into political office. I'll be back with my guest in a short while. Welcome. We're back. My guest is Dayo Israel. Am I correct? Yes, you are. Because, I mean, I wonder, Dio Israel, where did Israel come from? Israelite journey? <laughs> it's actually Timmy Dio Israel Abdullahi. There's an Abdullahi in the name. Okay, so why did you drop the Abdullahi? Um, it, it's long. And then when I get to airports most of the time, and they look at me and say, Israel Abdullahi, Israel Palestine. <laughs> yes, and Abdullahi yeah, Mecca. Yeah. <laughs> and all that. And a lot of times, I think the Dio Israel just evolved because, you know, they just picked the Dio out of the Temi Dio and then the Israel out of the Israel Abdullahi. And so, you know, but that's become the brand Dio Israel. Tell me what it was like growing up. You said you grew up in Nibu in Oyingo, in particular. Oyingo, in particular. Hmm. Okay. Growing up there, what was it like? And what is it that has made you become the man that you are today? Growing up in Oingbo was a very interesting period. I, um, I was with my grandmother and my mother, and each of us used to live in a room on Jeba Street. We see Jeba Street in Jebba Lagos. <laughs> That's Jeba by Oshalake, the Awiyale's house. Uh -huh. And then um, Favor and Fortune smiled on us, and we moved from uh, Jeba Street to Cannon Street to Room and Palo, and my grandmother had a shop in Oshalake. Cannon is that street that has a lot of beggars. beggars yeah, uh -huh. so you can imagine what I went through growing up, and it's all, oh, you live in Cannon Street. Yeah. yeah that, was, that was moving up for you. Yes, yes, that was upgrading for us. <laughs> but we're down Kano Street by Okobaba mm -hmm. and all that. I had seen somebody got shot by the police in front of me. You know, this guy, I think he said he robbed something. They came, the police came from SARS and shot the guy in his leg. You know, there was so much stuff in our area. But my mother had always said to us, you must be different. Because you're growing up in a butemeta does not mean that I'm raising you to be an butemeta seed. And so she would never let us watch football. She would say to us that in Romeji Kintochi, which means that two generations cannot be poor. So you've got to focus and study and be successful. I used to bed where till I was 11, uh, even 12 or 13. And that was because my mother was a no-nonsense prayer woman. She <laughs> wakes up at night. Um, when you wake up to we at 12 a.m. or 1 a.m. in the night, you'll meet my mother praying. The ironic part of it, and the most dangerous part of it, is that you're not going to go back to sleep. You will pray with her. You will pray with her so till you the morning. So you rather wet your bed than oh, I said, no, I'll let me wear to my bed here. <laughs> you know, so, but, you know, even in that, she taught us to be prayerful, to be focused, to focus on our studies. And, you know, that's one of the things you find with single parenting. Because, you know, our mothers don't want to make mistakes. They don't want our father's family to come and say, oh, see, you can't even raise a child. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that's one of the challenges that single parent children or children from single parent homes um, face. Because you have to deal with, in particular, a mother that is scared to fail. And you also have to deal with your own self and the expectation of society around you. I had to go through all those things. I had to go through those challenges and expectation from churches, from pastors. I had a lot of mental. If I did anything, my mother would run to headquarters in Redeem to go and report me to pastors. So, so now I see where it came from, because by age 13, you're already on the board of a non-governmental organization trying to do something about democracy, KIND, Kudurai Initiative. How did you meet KIND? 
Um, I had been involved with CLO, uh, I think around CLO. a civil liberties organization. Uh -huh. um, and then uh, CDHR, Femi Falano had CDHR on Adini Jones. And so I used to go to um, CLO at Ubat Street. As a nine year old. Yes, uh, Adam Zunaiji, Larry Suraj. They're all still my mentors today to grow good, of course. Adam passed on recently. And so I used to go there. I, I didn't know where the passion came from, but I just could not stand. The fact that we're in a military government, people were, I was reading all those law reports, Jewish law, law report. <laughs> Remember, it was a particular December, because every December at that time, Oli Sakbakoba would hold a forum, a, a, a Yuri Law's forum at um, Creek Road, their office on Creek Road there. Um, I think it was a particular one, 99 or 2000 at Deeds Day Dome. Um, we go there and then, you know, we would talk, we would have conversations. When Ganifa and me did this one million man match, I was part of the people that was part of that rally. There was a particular one. I was going to raise my hand to ask a question. And Ganifa and me say, no, it's, it's not going to allow me. Boy. You know, I, I can't even vote. So what am I going to talk about, you know? So when I went to the UN two years after or a year after, and I was talking live on CNN. I said, I was talking about children's rights and how people don't respect because our rights. Because you're representing the Ni Commonwealth. Yes, mm -hmm. and I alluded, to, I alluded to what happened in Nigeria about how they were silencing me and not allowing me to talk because I couldn't vote and calling for world leaders to institute a children's parliament like we already had in Nigeria. So because of all the things that I was doing, I was passionate, and that's the, what still drives me today. I hate poverty. I hate inequality. I hate lack of because social justice. Because I've been there. And I, I've seen also that people can have access to a better life. Come on. And it's the government's primary responsibility to provide liberty to people, to provide social justice uh, amenities to people. So when the things are lacking, it is responsibility of patriots to stand up and arise, irrespective of their age, their nomenclature, their background, their economic um, uh, nomenclature, okay, to but stand up. Let's talk about your story. You ended up on the children's parliament. Yes. I mean, you were involved from the beginning. Yes. And you got... Eventually, you moved to the UK. You yes. got many other opportunities from the Parliament, the UN. I became a one-day commissioner for information in Lagos State under the one-day governance program. Mm -hmm. And from there, to the glory of God, my mentor, Ashwaji Bolame Tinubu, offered me a scholarship to go to England to study law. Of course, I was already w working with Save the Children in the mm -hmm. UK at that time as a summer school assistant coordinating a program. And then I decided to go to school. Also, that was another story entirely. Because my auntie looked at me and said, how are you going to, I was working for Save the Children. I said, I wanted to study. I said, how are you going to pay for your school fees? How are you going to survive? You know, you can't make it in England. Go back to Nigeria and go and do jam. And I walked into the toilet and I prayed and I said, God, you're going to make room for me in this land. I'm going to be prosperous. And miraculously, Ashwajo and Kodili Alake, you know, offered me a scholarship to go study in the UK. And the people who said I could never achieve anything in the UK, when they were doing their naming ceremony, I had to write me an email invitation to be a special guest at the naming ceremony a few years down the line. So you got the opportunity of a great education, you have good opportunities, and then you decide that you want to come back home to run for a local government office. I, I think for me is, I've, in my own little way, impacted communities, impacted societies. Um, I've run um, projects in relating to uh, climate change, wash. So why a butemeta? That's where I came out from. And Yoruba will say, In other words, you start from the house. Mm. And for me, it's really about giving people access to opportunities that I had. If not for those opportunities, I could have been a tout on Kano Street today, also asking for 20 naira from Danfo, Shandy, Fiber, And so some of your colleagues are still touts there? Yes, of course. This is the point at which I will take a break, because I take a break, I want to introduce one of the people on your campaign team who happen to have grown up with you to let people understand how you can come back to your community and enter it. Can I take a break? Absolutely. Thank you very much. I'll be right back and we'll introduce Ganiyu, who is one of the team leaders for for um, Dio's campaign. We'll be right back. Yes, it would have been nice to have people who are running for office from all over Nigeria, but of course we find the ones that is close. So Dio is extremely lucky that he's getting <laughs> on this show today. But I'm using you as an example because right. you decided to come back home. You could have done anything in the UK Absolutely. or even in the US. Opportunities exist there for you Absolutely. as well, but you've come. You didn't even seek to be in house of rape. So you want to be local government chairman? People have come to me, Auntie, and said, you know, you're, you're, where you are is bigger than this. And I said, for you to actually have direct impact on people, you need executive powers. <laughs> so this way you make more impact. Absolutely. But before we talk, I want to, to invite Ganiyu because on your team. Ganiyu, please come on and join us on set. And um, I'm not going to get her to shake your hands. I'm just going to ask you to walk. You're welcome. Nice to thank have you. you here. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Sit down. So you are, are you the chief of... Uh, What's your constituency? Lagos mainland. Lagos mainland. Lagos mainland. Yes. So is the Butemeta the headquarters? 
You're educating me. Oh. Yes, which military is a strong part of the Lagos mainland. Actually, that was where Lagos, a strong part of where Lagos started from. That was the original, the heart yeah. of no, so Lagos the last, Island. No, no, no. When, when they, I said before Lagos Island came, Lagos mm -hmm. mainland existed. And so, as a matter of fact, there are worries. There are words that read, the last place you read <laughs> before that it sank, before getting to Dumota, was Edo, which is in Lagos mainland. Okay, that's interesting. So these are the sons of the soil. Now, this man comes back to you and says, look, I want to run for office. What did you guys advise him to do? Well, Is he bring money? Because here you have to bring money. Well, um, the issue on ground now is not about money. We youth are agitating for change. Because we, we've been facing a lot of things in mainland, and then um, we choose to like neglect them, let them do whatever they can do. But they use you people now. They use you people to come and campaign. Yes, they have been using people, and they have started killing themselves. But we intellects in our mainland, we choose to be on our own, not until it comes in. So tell me, how did you, how did he convince you? Why, I mean, because he's a young man, I mean, next birthday, <laughs> you're 34, you're 30, you're what? 30 yet, 31, have you turned 31? next birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so why did he convince you that he wants to be your leader without well, money? Well, um, um, we've known um, Honorable Dario for, for so long, while he was even young. So he really have people in mind. What was he like? Was he a rascal? Uh, no. I, I knew him to be an NGO person. Oh, really? Yes. Mm -hmm. And at least like eight or nine of we youths traveled with him. Then I was in school. Mm -hmm. So I, since then, I have been seeing him as a very good person that can really lead us in mainland. Mm -hmm. So when he came, I have to like, okay, let me call one or two. Young men. Young men, let's talk about it. So we talked about it and we move it to our, um, because I, 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 I happen to be um, an actor at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we moved it to my, my orgas, Yinka Kodri, Ogo, and then um, What Kaka. makes them your orgas? They're like, what? what? I mean, because they are actors. The NTP, the actors, so, the so, no, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are tampan. Nollywood what? actors. Nollywood oh, yes. Yinka Kodri, Ogo, 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 Kaka. Ogo, Kaka. Uh -huh. So we, we, we went to them and, you know, we threw, we threw it to them and they were like, okay, we should carry on, let's see. Mm -hmm. So we on it, and by God's grace, I think we'll be there. Tell me why you chose to go through the young people. How did you, how did, I mean, when you, okay, you, only four months ago, you didn't even know you were going to run for office. Yes. So what kicked it off in your mind, and what were the process you took? I was actually working uh, um, as a director at the Commonwealth African Initiative, mm -hmm. um, which have is... You, have you quit that job now? I still do that part-time now mm -hmm. as a director of cooperation. So just March, we said the Commonwealth Africa Summit where President Obasanjo was attending, where the richest man in Syria alone, and Ambassador Jimmy Santigay, Musarif Adika was there, the pre president of Malta was at the service with the Queen at the Abbey. So we, you know, and we're getting ready for another meeting in Rwanda, Commonwealth Africa Forum in Rwanda, and then mm -hmm. the Commonwealth Africa Summit in London. And then I began to get the lead in to run. And I said, God, number one, I'm doing How a lot. How does that happen, though? It, it, you know, it, it's a body on my heart, a spiritual body, because I, I'm is. very spiritual. Mm -hmm. You know, to say that I want you to get in the race for the local government, to go and serve in your community. And I'm like, what I currently do, I'm working with prime ministers, heads of government, the mm -hmm. queen, but you know, look, going for local government, mm -hmm. I'm, I now relate with ballets, you know, who are not <laughs> even up to, some of them not up to a first class tier king in Lagos. But God said, no, I need you to go there. Everything I brought you through, every door I've opened for you is for such a time as this so that you can be a beacon of life for your generation. And that's, that's what it was for me. So when I went down there, I made it clear. Number one, I'm not looking for an appointment or a job. If I wanted that, I would have gotten it on a platter of gold. Mm -hmm. But it's for me to come and stand to the glory of God. We've done a lot in the past. I've done projects in the community. I, We're going to see some of those things. But you see, what, what attracted me, you decided to come home, and then you went to the grassroots again. Yeah. So it wasn't difficult for you to fit in. Because I was already part of the grassroots. I had connected with them. I was always coming always, to them. You know, yes. He's always. He was always coming home even though he was in the UK? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't difficult for him to come back and see it you? It wasn't because... So what is the lesson? Okay, go ahead. It wasn't difficult because he, he helped some of our colleagues to UK, America, like that. Oh, really? Yes. So what, is, what kind of lesson does this example hold? Because my, 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 my thing is nobody is too young to run. Yes. You think there's opportunity for young people if people can support them? I think... Yeah, it's opportunity. Uh, Auntie, for me, I think it's important for young people to actually start from where they are. It's not, you don't just wake up. I would have had problems if I hadn't been part of that community, if I hadn't sat where they sat. I sit down with them, I hang out with these people, 
because they're my people and I feel the same pain. So it's not somebody coming from up to say I want to come and so stay. So is it is the thing that costs money? Well, I'll take a break. We'll talk about that. I mean, I'll take a break. Thank you, Gani, you for joining Thank us. You. I appreciate it. No, I want you to be right, seated right there. Okay. Because I want to take a break and invite and show some of the initiatives that this young man has done right. that makes him have the courage that he knows that when he goes out to seek for votes, people will elect him in. I'll be right back. Thank you.